if your resolution is not print quality, right? If it's smaller than eight by 10 by 300, then we have a contingency to make it work as a screen resolution project. We'll be doing that when we do our first proving ground for the creative problem solving badge. But it's always best to work at a larger resolution because it's, it's good to downsample, it's not good to upsample. So continuing, we are blending in this water, but if I zoom in, yeah, actually it's all looking fairly believable so far. So let me review a little bit just from some questions we had in the room, right? Just how to do kind of good cutouts when you're not just blending atmosphere at this point. So I, I did what's called internal compositing with this column. I took the column from another asset and I just did a rough lasso around it, made it into a new column on a new layer. And now I'm gonna use this in a new way. Maybe I can even use it on top of, well, let's see. Yeah, I'll use it on top of this layer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of those hard cutout edges. Remember, it's like I cut it out of a magazine and now I want to start ha having it match the environment a little bit. So I use my eraser at 100% opacity, large but very soft, it's 0% hardness. And then I erase away from the edge. And I'm using my pressure sensitivity tablet so that I'm not at all in danger of accidentally erasing some of the column or the pixels that I want to keep. Because I need that column to be a very clear, sturdy, visible asset. And maybe even that little stalactite or stalagmite at its base. All right. Next. I can get rid of this. Just very gently. Now is a good time to play with its color. So this is going to review direct adjustments from, from last class. We do them so often that eventually you'll dream about them. But we go to image adjustment because we want to directly affect the pixels in that layer. And we do direct adjustment. We always start with levels and we always start with the midtone slider. And I love these because you can just play with them until it looks right to you. This only adjusts the lights and darks. Don't worry about color yet. But that yellow color is, is kind of interesting. And then if you need to, if the lighting is particularly harsh, like the highlight here is pretty harsh, you might want to limit your highlights. And those are the bottom sliders. So I'm just going to limit it by about 15 points. You could also limit your shadows, but I definitely don't want that here. If I wanted to increase my contrast, I could. But the problem is whenever you use the edges, you, you risk either blasting out the whites so that it just turns to pure white pixels, which you can't then adapt from, or making all the shadows into solid blacks, which you can't then get any pixel content from. So you're safest just playing with the mid-tone slider. So I'm going to adjust mine maybe to about right there. Say OK. Now, after levels, is color balance, my favorite. This is the color temperature. So I'm going to take the mid-tones and it's very yellow right now. I'm going to see what it looks like to push them a little more towards blue. And again, not too far. You lose pixel differentiation. You want to have all that variation in there. I'm going to push it a little bit towards cyan. Just in the mid-tone. See what that looks like. Push it a little bit towards magenta because we have so much pink in that back wall. And now I'm going to go to highlights and I'm going to warm them up, go a little bit towards red, a little bit back towards yellow. And then I'm going to go to shadows and I always counter my highlights and shadows. So I'm going to push my shadow temperature towards blue and towards cyan. And now I've got this really nice roundness of color. You know, it has kind of greens in it. It's got like purplish browns in it going to pinks. And that looks better than it did before. Now it's already kind of matching, even though I haven't done a clean cutout yet. This is a good time to do Option Command T and maybe play with transforming a little bit. 
I can widen it out. I can tilt it. So I want it to help my composition. I can even go back to levels and play with its lights and darks. So it's a little bit stronger. Now the last one under direct adjustments is hue saturation. And this is when you want really kind of big changes in color. But I think a lot of students in my morning class really, this messed them up because they loved having that ability. But as soon as you push it pretty like within 10 of the middle, it just washes everything into a monochrome, right? So now it's only green or only cyan or only pink. So the, the only thing I do with this is I push it usually within five to the left and to the right. And I like it a little bit to the left. Not that much, maybe like that much. And then you can play with the intensity of the color. Maybe I'll just goose the saturation a little bit. But that's it. I don't play with anything else. Now to refresh your minds on cutting out. I use the lasso and I use the tablet, but I don't do it with a zero feather. Instead, I do it with a one pixel feather. Then I can zoom in. And you can see that when I'm zooming in, my tools are getting bigger, but my image isn't. So zoom out till it's 100. Click on the image, and then you can zoom in on the image. So when you want to change your tool setting, click on the URL bar and do Command minus or Command plus. And I'll actually make it a little bit smaller than 100. But when you want to zoom in on your image, click on the image and do Command minus Command plus. Okay, now I want to use my lasso with a one pixel feather. I'm going to turn off my guide so it doesn't accidentally stick to the guides. And I'm going to run along the edge of this column and then in chunks I'm going to delete it whoops it's a little annoying delete it out just hit delete same thing with the bottom And because this is an organic element, I can actually decide where I want to cut it. I don't need to stick to its actual edges. Just like a mountaintop, I can cut the mountaintop wherever I want. You have the power. All right. And a good professional use of Photoshop has a lot to do with the ability to, to select things cleanly. So remember, you can always add to selections by holding down Shift. You can always subtract from selections by holding down option while you select. I'm going to select around these little stalag mites at the base. But that actually might all get covered up. Yeah, so I don't need to spend too much time worrying about that. All right, so now within my guides, now I have a column that's fitting in fully. And let's see, what's my other problem? I have nothing back here filling it in. So what I might do is take this foreground element, do a little internal compositing here. Internal compositing is when you steal from stuff you already have, right? And I'm going to use my lasso, and I'm just going to take this chunk of the corner. 
duplicate it, Command J, move that to the background, and flip it with Option Command T, flip it vertically. and then move it up. Move it back. So it just fills in that, that area that's gray. I can kind of stretch it. Oops, moved it back too far. There we go. So with internal compositing, I can make sure we have that background filled in. I can use Option Command T for free transform. I can hold down Shift, stretch it. I can warp it. I just need like the littlest bit of rock texture there that I can blend with. And I'm going to change its color balance to make it pinker. So if you if you have any gaps, you can always use internal compositing to fill them. And I'll come around, help you guys with the issues that this project brings. There are many. And I'm going to use my eraser, and I blend in the layer in front. Always saving my work. I'm excited because the next video I get to show you dodge and burn, which is how you can control the lighting direction on your elements. And I mostly moved this column so I can use it as an example for it. Not all of you might need dodge and burn for this, but it's good to get introduced to. That's looking okay. Now, I'm going to be really, really picky here. Sometimes when your work is really good, I'll be really, really picky on it. I don't like this. Because I just copied it and flipped it, right? Your eye, even if it gets cropped to here, will subconsciously kind of put together that that's the exact same angle as that. This flip. That's what I call being copy pasty. So internal compositing is very helpful, but if you don't alter it enough, it looks very copy pasty. So if you have like four trees in your landscape and they're all the same tree and you haven't transformed them, that's copy pasty. Yeah. It will look unsettling. So all it takes, it's very technical, all it takes is, is transforming them a little bit more to make everything your own. So Option Command T. And this is where warp might be really helpful to kind of change the angle and the proportions of this wall. It can even help your composition. I've created kind of a cave door where there was nothing before. 